as a real estate investor, two things could be. It could be that one, you were either very lucky or two, you knew what you were doing. Chances are that in today's world, you have to have known what it was that you were doing because luck doesn't necessarily cut it as the case may be. For people who are going to be investing in real estate, what you're looking for is profit. What people would always be considering when they are assessing whether you are a successful real estate investor or not would be in the size of your portfolio, how well it is that it is doing, or how in demand it is that that portfolio actually is. My name is Lerato Likena Okur. I'm a realtor based in Lagos, Nigeria, and today you are joining us for another episode on creating wealth through real estate. If you haven't already subscribed or you just haven't seen any of our videos, I hope that by the time that you get towards the end of the video, you will already be hitting that subscribe button because you want to continue to learn and enjoy the value that it is that you are getting. But then, why haven't you subscribed? So being a realtor, I have come across a lot of people who have tried to invest in real estate, who have assumed that real estate investing is about acquiring so many properties that look good, that feel good, and are priced at a range where they feel, oh yes, we're gonna be able to hit the money on this. And then it then turns out that they don't actually hit the numbers that way, and they're wondering, what went wrong. Now there are many things that could have gone wrong and today we're going to be talking through some of these things so that you, who is probably thinking of getting started, who is already invested, or you are looking at reassessing or reorganizing your portfolio and then will say, what is it that you should not do? How is it that you can do it better? And what is it that you should actually start doing with your investments. And the first thing that it is that you want to be able to do would be to identify emerging trends. Emerging trends would apply to what the things are that the people that are going to be using your property, renting your property, are going to need and want to be able to do with property. Now, as an investor, you are always going to be investing with the timeline of the fact that between when it is that your first investment goes in and the time that your property is actually going to start being used, that there will be a gap. There will be that space in between that period. Now, what you then want to do would be invest in the future needs of your target client. Is your target client somebody who needs to move to a certain area? Then your thinking will then be what type of property would somebody who is living in area X and wants to come into area B need or want it to have? If the person is going to be moving from a duplex because the person is downsizing on their finances and the person is saying we want to be able to save more money and then first so it would now be a function of somebody who's moving from a duplex and going to be moving into a flat or in due to a duplex in a different area what were they enjoying where they were were the roads paved did they have a community type of environment did they have multiple car parking did they have space for the kids to play will they be able to find you know, amenities around them in the area. These are the things that you, as a person who is investing, needs to be able to think about from the scratch when you're investing. Now, doing that not only makes sure that you are investing in the right place, but you would also be investing in a property that is aptly designed for that person. Now, you may not always get it right because people can change, people's needs can change. Somebody who is moving from point A to point B may actually be moving through different phases. The person may not necessarily be moving his or her entire family, but the person wants to have space. So there will always be variables, but once you can get the major markers and understand how it is that the people are needing to think because of their money, then you are definitely going to have to be that person who would find smarter opportunities that you can invest in. 
Now, the next thing that you want to be able to do as an investor who's going who's looking to unlock opportunities for your property portfolio would be the fact that you need to network and build relationships. Now, a lot of times people assume that it is a person who's on the offering side that needs to be able to build those relationships, who needs to keep networking. But you, as the person who wants to put your money somewhere, who wants to invest in something, you have to know that that thing is available for you to invest in. Now, we always say that information is one of the best things that people can have when they want to be able to build smoothest leverage. But whilst that is true, there's always going to be the fact that information that you can act on is what's going to be in your best interest. So you are always going to have to have one, people who can give you that value, two, people who think like you, people who have needs like you, people who are interested in similar things like you, or people who can help you see through current opportunities that you think exist and say, how do we make this better? How are we going to be able to add from this? How is it that we're going to be able to prevent this negative thing from actually happening? So when you surround yourself by people like that in different fields, in different areas, because real estate is a people business, then you can almost always be guaranteed of having opportunities. Now I'll make, use myself as an example. When I used to just sell real estate, I used to look for the companies that had real estate that they wanted to sell. I almost was, you know, looking, just looking up for, oh, do you have this land? Yes. What do you say the land has? It has a title. It has this. It's bare land. It's great. Those are the type of companies I was looking out for. But by the time that I started to grow in my career and I knew that I didn't just want to sell lands or housing and stuff like that. And I wanted to be able to help my clients to make viable investments. My thinking changed. My approach to finding the properties changed. The circles that I needed to work in or move in or talk with also had to change. Reason being that if I stayed in the same circles or I kept looking for the same things, I would never be able to get the new things that I wanted to now start being able to offer my clients. So if you as an investor can see the value in changing to network or build relationships with people that are doing or can do the things that you are looking to do, then you will definitely be easier able to unlock opportunities because you would have the information. The information is going to be the first key that is going to allow you to say, okay, because this is happening, let's make this happen. I hope this all is making sense. And if you can just hit the like button or you can just drop a comment, like drop a comment and tell me what is it that you are thinking? What are the ways that you are thinking that you could actually be practicalizing any of these tips? Where are the places that you think that you should be going to network? Let's create a trail of comments about where it is that we think that we can be networking to ensure that we are unlocking the right opportunities for our real estate portfolios. And then when you consider the fact that you are building relationships, you would also be thinking about who are the people that you're building relationships with. We all know bankers. We all know mortgage financiers. We all know people who are lenders. But do we know, do we all know these people that can actually help to progress our goals? Not every banker is going to be the one that you have to talk to when you're looking for investment financing. Not every mortgage bank is going to be able to provide you with the solutions that it is that you need. And sometimes you don't even need the corporate financing. What you probably would be needing would be other people who want to be able to put their money, even though it's limited, into a certain venture and be able to make money off of it. So when you think about building of relationships, and this is where it goes a lot more than looking just for people that are directly in fields or in areas that it is that you think that you need, even just having a wide net of people that could think like you, 
that could want the same things as you would be a way that it is that you would easier unlock opportunities because let's have a tip let me make a typical example with our co-investment community example we have people in there who are all looking to invest in real estate with some of them they know that they only have a specific amount of money with some other people they are able to unlock you know greater amounts of money either from their savings or they have access to financing as the case may be when deals and offers are dropped in the community people talk about them think through them and then somebody says oh i think i want to be able to i want to do this who wants to do this with me let's do this and then we now you know we share it xyz way or let's do it i have this percentage and who else can bring up the money for the rest these are things that you can use to build relationships and that was one reason why we were very keen on be- making sure that we also enabled a community for like-minded people who want want to be able to do that because for us it's a way that we create value in the society it's a way that we ensure that we are also able to also even get information have access to more people that are like us also and want to be able to do what it is that we are doing creating wealth through real estate if you do not like money or you like money and you're not investing in real estate then what are you investing in that's a question that you should be able to ask yourself rhetorically but if you invest in something else and you're fine with that then all well and good so some of the other factors that you would also be considering doing would include your research, your due diligence, leveraging technology, leveraging data, you know, leveraging the expertise of people that are in your network. And when I say you are leveraging, either because you know them or you have access to them or you are able to mingle with them, chances are that you don't need a middleman. When you remove a middleman, who is then going to be speaking for you or for that person, you are better able to negotiate. Have you noticed that in transactions or in negotiations, that a lot of times the negotiations work better, faster, and more efficiently when you, who is the decision maker, is in the room or at the table, and both of you are then able to say, oh, this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. Oh, no, this can't work for me. Can we do this? And you find a middle ground. Those are some of the things that almost always help to ensure that better deals are arrived at. So when you think about investing and you say you're looking for the best opportunity without actually getting your hands into the different deals that exist, chances are that you're just going to remain on the sidelines until somebody crafts the perfect deal. And to be honest, there's never going to be a perfect deal for you unless that person has either been paid to craft the deal for you or the person just by chance found a deal for you. So instead of waiting, instead of saying, I want to let somebody else do that why not get into the driver's seat get involved so that you can actually start to make the best happen there's something that i like to say to people who are on the fence about whether it is they should start investing i say the best way that we all learn as people is by doing you do it the first time and then you don't get the exact results that you want you do it the next time knowing what it is that you did that didn't work and then you're able to put it into play you're able to make it work and then you feel like oh yes i did this and then you do it again and then you do it again by the time that you have done it a certain number of times People who are outside also looking at you would be thinking that you are pro. And when they start to think that you are pro, it means that they are also going to be giving you the respect and the status as somebody who is pro or successful at that. And then they would now start coming to you to understand how it is that you've done it, what it is that you're doing. And that gives you also the opportunity to know more people, meet more people who are thinking like you or who have similar goals to you and possibly even get more money capital that it is that you can jointly do things together and last but not least would be to research or know about local development plans in to the early 2000s when there was this when the news broke out about the dangote refinery and the fact that the free trade zone was going to be created and was going to be i mean 
all shades of magnificent and spectacular. What we found happening in the market was that developers started going into the area to buy up, take up lands from families who owned lands there. Now, a lot of these developers had sold out years before the, the refinery even got to a critical point that we can say, yes, it was going to be launched or anything. And what that means is that a lot of people who had bought lands there had already keyed in. Now, think about all the people who had bought lands there and then consider the fact that because the free trade zone was going to be there, that the government also would then have development plans for the area. Because think with a free trade zone, there will be heavy traffic. They probably have to widen the roads. With the um, refinery, there's going to be a whole lot of pollution in the area. So when you think about what development issues or factors are going to come into the areas that you're considering to invest in, you will know easier, better, whether you should go in or you should not go in. And if you're going to go in, you would also know what type of opportunities it is that you would be looking to unlock. A lot of people have come up with the option of, oh, the Dunkerton refinery is going to open up jobs. Yes, it's going to open up jobs, but jobs for who? People who are going to be moving into the area to work are going to need housing. Yes, that's right. But what kind of housing are they going to be looking for? Are people that are going to be working there who are low level workers, are they going to be looking to invest in properties like flats or duplexes or semi-detached and stuff like that? Are you going to have more people who want flats or are you going to have more people who want full homes? By the time you understand all these different criteria, you would better be able to unlock opportunities that will ensure that your investment portfolio remains successful, is viable, and can cash flow to a point where you are consistently earning off of it. So if you are thinking about what it is that you should be going in to invest in, this episode has probably or should probably have given you a whole lot of ideas about what it is that you should look for, how best it is that you can do it, and what ways it is that you can actually get started. Having watched this episode up to this point, my assumption is that you have actually learned something. You have enjoyed it. You have gained some value. So please take the time to either hit the like button or subscribe to the channel, or just comment down below and tell me what it is that you liked. What is it that you want to be able to know more about? What questions do you have about investing in real estate? So that one of the next videos that I will be launching or releasing on the channel could be answering your questions. My name is Lerato Likena Okuru. I'm a realtor based in Lagos, Nigeria, and I remain your trusted friend and investment broker. Till next time with another video. Adios.